Hey, what's up, Strike Team, and welcome back to another episode of Strike Team Official. It is a great day right now. I hope you're all having a phenomenal day. I got my new Avengers poster in the back. Very happy about that. Satisfying my nerd side. Got my only Hickey Tay shirt on. It's a good day, right? So um, today we're going to be going over kata, our martial art forms in general. Whether it's smarter to collect hundreds and hundreds of kata or kind of focus on a narrow few. Now, different martial arts view this in a lot of different ways, right? So one of the most popular styles of martial arts, Shotokan, has 26 katas in its system, okay? But if you go to styles like Shizuru, which has one of the uh, largest sets of katas that I know of, I believe that has 96 or 97 katas in their system. And then you have systems like my first karate system of Weichi, which has eight to nine katas, depending on which association you're in. So this begs the question, is it better to have a small number of katas, such as like Weichi, or have hundreds of katas? I mean, if, if you go out to the World Karate Federation, they actually recognize over 102 katas, right? So it's huge. Now, to help me kind of break this down, I actually had the pleasure of recently interviewing a Noah Legal, who runs Karate Obsession, which is one of the largest, if not the largest, practical karate uh, online presence in all of Northern Cal in all of Northern America. Okay, so he is the main guy in North America for this. is huge for me to be able to interview this guy. I am from the United States, so he's like the dude we're all looking up to when it comes to practical martial arts in this part of the world. And so we sat down and we had a very long interview, which I'm actually going to post on Strike Talks and on my podcast. And I'm actually going to take a little clip where we actually get into and discuss his experience collecting katas and also narrowing them down. Okay. And then we're going to get a bit deeper into it. and We're going to talk about it toward the end. So I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys get some valuable out of this and roll the clip. Um, I, I loved to collect kata. Just keep learning more and more of them. Um, in that school, you all, you weren't supposed to learn kata ahead of where you were supposed to be in the curriculum based on your rank. Um, you know, they wouldn't teach them to you and you weren't supposed to practice them or anything like that. I, I regularly did. I watched the higher ranks run their kata, memorized them as best I could, ran them off to the side when nobody was looking. Um, attended little seminars to learn extra kata. Um, which is why I... I don't remember the actual final count of all the number of kata that I have learned over the years. It's in the forties. Oh my, mm. not counting weapons. Um, That's a lot of kata. Yeah. To today I could still pull off 33 of them. Yes. That's, that last that's count. so much. Um, I, in my own personal practice though, I don't do that many. <laughs> I've trimmed it down a lot actually, um, yeah. to a core selection. And then every now and then I'll break out one of the other ones for, you know, some extra study or exploration or just for fun. But mm -hmm. um, I, I've you've pared it down. Yeah, quite well, I was going to ask this. Um, so right now you, you mentioned earlier that you don't do nearly as many kata as, as the 33 or so that you know right now. Um, how do you... Uh, how do you pick and which katas you do? What are they like? What, how have you narrowed that down? Um, I narrowed them down by a couple of different things. So for one thing, if there is something that I know, like an older version and a newer version mm -hmm. of the kata, I'll tend to go with the older version. Okay. Um, especially if there's a lot of repetition in kata, um, you know, if there's everything that's in the pinan kata, I can find that in, you know, pasai, kusanku, chinto. Do I need to teach the pinan kata? Apparently, so, but everything the pinans can be found in those other, in those other katas though. In some variation. Yeah. Um, you know, it might be to a different angle. The posture might be slightly different, but uh, overall, most of it can be found in the other in the other kata, and the few bits and pieces that can't, you could still teach those. You don't need a full kata because it's got one different thing in it. Good point. Okay. You know, you can you can just as easily while you're teaching kusanku go, and if you did this here instead, and you know, and and get that worked in, and you're good. Okay. Okay. You know. 
Um, that's not to say there's not good material in the pinons. There absolutely is. If you wanted to take the pinons and just use them as your entire basis for practical glorata, you could, and you would have plenty of material. Um, it's not anything against the pinons, but it's removing redundancy gotcha. in, in my curriculum. So, all right, there you go, guys. Noah breaking down his thought process on collecting katas, right? And I, I'm in full agreement with pretty much everything that he said. Now, unless you're going out and collecting katas for historical value, for, you know, just wanting to have that connection to the past, just something you want to do personally, you know, that's totally fine. But if you're looking to become uh, combatively skilled, if you're looking to learn katas for the application, whether that's for sport or self-defense, you actually want to learn how to compete and or fight with them, it is probably a smarter plan to narrow your focus, right? Because at the end of the day, if you view 100 katas, you can fi probably find 20 katas that all share the same principles and base techniques and just focus on those 20 instead of trying to learn the entire 100, right? And on a personal note, okay, my original system of Weichi, which only has eight katas, very streamlined, I actually only practice three of them in my daily practice. I'll remember them all for the art of teaching them and, you know, performing them for others. But on a personal level, when it comes to me combatively and what I train on a daily basis, I only really focus on three. And as I moved and started my journey learning Shonru Karate, I actually picked, I actually picked Shonru Karate for a very particular reason. I picked it because they have almost no katas in common with Weichi. And the principles of that system are almost entirely different. Karate is based out of three main cities in Okinawa and Weishiru and Shoranru are from two different areas. And so they're very, very different. So I'm enjoying learning something that is really completely new. And so if I go forward and later in life decide to say, learn a Kung Fu style, right? I want to focus and find a Kung Fu style that's forms are very, very different and have different principles from the karate kata principles, right? Because at the end of the day, it's about taking that time to make sure I'm actually learning new things and not trying to master different ways of doing the exact same thing. It's not to say that I can't go out and learn similar kata because every different kata, you know, those little changes might open my eyes to something new, but I don't want to spend my time mastering things that I already have a grasp over, if that makes sense, right? So it's about being as efficient with your time as possible cutting out that redundancy, right? And again, it goes not just for karate, but any martial arts that uses forms, that could be Kung Fu, uh, you know, whatever it is, this same thought process applies if you're looking to find combative skill It's or, or just really master it. It's important to narrow down your focus. All right, guys, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. The full interview uh, with Noah is actually going to be posted on my other channel, Strike Talk. Uh, which is also a podcast. So it's going to be up on that too. I'll put all the links down below so you guys can reach out to that. Um, again, just want to give a shout out to this shirt, Only Hickey Tay by Karate Unity. I'm not uh, sponsored by him in any way. He's just a, a cool guy, cool guy within the art form of, uh, he's just a cool guy, another karate guy out there trying to spread the word of practical karate and bring all martial arts together. I like his mission. So I'm just giving him my support. I'm gonna put his link down below as well. If you guys wanna grab this shirt, only Hikite. And yeah, guys, please like, subscribe, hit the notification button, share with anyone else who you think might find value in this. And if you are someone who collects katas and you totally disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. Explain to me, maybe, I mean, tell me why. At the end of the day, this is a journey we're all learning. Maybe there's something about collecting katas that I missed uh, that you could maybe enlighten me on in the comments. So please uh, go ahead comment as well, and I will talk to y'all later. All right, guys. Peace.